Okay, I'd like to call to order today's special meeting of the Northampton Council on Aging Board. And I would first like to explain to you that I call this special meeting, and next week we have our regular monthly meeting. Today there will be no comments from the public. We can only meet as a public, public meeting laws only allow us to talk over what you discussed to us last time in public. So we have each looked over things and we will discuss it. You're here for a meeting of us talking among ourselves. So if you would like to speak, it come to next week's meeting, okay? There's a public session. This is a special meeting that I call for this particular purpose. We, have, we do not have um, the right to meet and discuss this without it being a public meeting. So thank you for your understanding. And I'm going to, um, we're not going to approve the minutes because the minutes are still in draft. So I'm going to cross that part off of the meeting. And I ask the members here to um, please um, discuss things, the issues that were raised by the public in the last meeting that we had. And we're here to give our opinions and input to the director as to some of the ways that we can help remedy or help her remedy the situation. I, I do want to um, ask you to speak concisely and clearly and that we had quite a homework assignment to read a lot of things and I ask that you <coughs> abide by that. If you haven't read it, let's just go to, let's talk to the, let's have the people talk that are, have prepared something to say. I don't want it to just be popcorn. I'd love to have it to be a very, you know, um, conversation where we get a lot done, so. And uh, I will ding the little bell here if you start speaking among them yourselves or over-talking or interrupting, so. And I'd like to welcome the mayor here, which was one of the things that was on last week's, last month's uh, board meeting that people would like to see the mayor here. So he is here to observe and to offer our, his support. So thank you very much, Mayor. Well, thank you, it's good to be here. Um, and I would actually say that this is um, one of my executive powers under the charter. Uh, You're mumbling. Oh, sure, yes. So one of uh, the charter actually says that in addition to um, creating and appointing uh, members, uh, people to multi-member bodies, that I'm also a member of every multi-member body um, and have the option, if I want to, to sit down with bodies from time to time and discuss with them. So I'm grateful for the opportunity to do this and to observe, and I appreciate all the time you're taking uh, setting aside this time to try to um, uh, discuss and respond to the public comment. So, thank you. Okay, Marie, so let's show you start with uh, working on this document. The minutes from the last. We're going on the minutes. We're gonna, yeah, I mean, we're going to get feedback. If, yeah, I think it would be helpful to go through each thing in the minutes that okay. was brought to the last meeting. Just briefly, though. I, I mean, okay. Yeah. So um, the main topic. One of the first people that spoke spoke about it. Um, that the senior center feels changed, and that there's it's no longer a happy place, and it possibly it was due to non-communication from the director, and uh, wanted to know the role of, of the council here. Um, it does list the person spoke to uh, us being a board of directors, and we explained at the last meeting that we are a council. We don't make policy; we advise the director and her staff. So okay. Anybody have some comments on how to do that? How to come up with that? I think, Jean, I think that um, it would be, we should note that as a result of those comments, we just put the as, a as, a result, as a result of those comments, um, many of the board members have listed their email addresses on um, the website because we, um, we heard what you had to say about feeling as if you needed more access to the people who sat um, on this council. So um, that's one way in which we've tried to respond. I, I do want to add that the council 
we're not individuals, so so to speak. We are a group, so that the count you can offer your comments to the council member, but they cannot like give you the the answer to your question. So you might have access to us, but we have to bring it to this meeting to to come up with the proper answer. We don't want any one of us answering, you know, for all of us. Um, as a result of us listing our email addresses, I, we did hear from someone. And one of the things that I wanted to um, mention to you today was that I thought that we should have um, ready a response because, you know, people probably don't understand that although we received their emails, it's a, it would be a violation of a public meeting for us to respond to them. And I think that there should be, we should have a paragraph that explains that, um, that yes, we've heard it, and um, even that, you know, that it will be brought up at the next meeting, but that because of state law, we can't respond directly to them at that time. Because I, I think that that is one of the things that, it's, it's very awkward to, for people to understand if they don't get a response, it's not necessarily because they weren't. I mean, it, you, you have to at least get an acknowledgement that you've been heard, even if you can't respond to it. Yeah. Yeah. A clarification, Jean. Oh, uh, you said to add a paragraph. Are you referring to something on the website? I thought that we could have we we as a as a council could just draft a res a, a, a you know a template that we could use as a response. In order so that people understood that we heard them and why we are responding directly to the, to the complaint or the um, question. Uh, so I, hold on a second. I do want to say that as the chair of the council, I do have an email that you can email directly. It's a uh, council on aging chair at northamptonma.gov. North so I would prefer that you sent it directly to me. Um, and I have explained at these meetings that we are a public group, so we, we're not supposed to be answering your, your questions individually. So that's the preference. Or you can also email things to Marie. So that's the preference, is that you don't choose somebody on the council to direct your attention to, but we could bring it to the council also. So that's my suggestion. Kathy? So what I'm hearing, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that you would be getting uh, a query or a question or concern from members, and then you would be sending out just a, having a, like a, we've got, thank you very much for your email, I will bring it up at the next council meeting. So a response will go out in a timely manner to, to the writer, and then you would then discuss it on, all together at our next council meeting. Is that correct? Right. Okay. I mean, I understand that, but... People gave their personal emails, right. which I don't necessarily agree with, but it was asked of us. So mm -hmm. personal emails, personal phones. I, is that mm -hmm. really what we want to do? If it's a meeting, if it's, a, it's for the whole group, the inquiry. It's not a personal thing. Yes. I mean, I would lose it if you, got, if you sent it to my regular email because of all the email I get. So I would imagine that some council members might say, oh, I don't know who this person is, or it goes to the junk file because the person's never emailed you before. So that's what I ask. That's my request to send it to myself or to Marie, and we will handle it here in the meeting. So. But, but you're also saying that you will, before the meeting, and in turn send out, as Jean was suggesting, a response just so people feel like they've been heard and, and that they will know that it's going to be discussed at the meeting, correct? Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Yes, Michael. You mentioned that you have a particular kind of email that uh, is official. Dot go. Is there a way that we could get them? Here's my suggestion. Uh, origin. There are folks who know us mm -hmm. and who feel that they'd like to reach out to us because they know us, the neighbors or whatever. And I agree with you that if I get things, even if the people I know and the neighbors I know about, I might not. Be is there a way that that kind of email could be made available to a member of the council? So that we would know that I, I can address that. I mean, we, we can. I can check with our IT department and see. We um, like school committee members have official NPS um, email addresses. City councilors have official city uh, government emails. Not all of them use them, actually. But um, 
I can inquire as to that. Good. Um, one other, I would just require you to have maintain two separate email accounts and two separate logins and two separate, um, that would be the, one of the challenges, but you can certainly look into that and then whatever um, the cost would be involved in creating individual email accounts. Thank you, Dave. So I can certainly Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, let's go on. Um, we don't want to get bogged down. Okay. I'd like to move. Okay. Um, so, uh, a suggestion I would have regarding um, that one. I, I feel like um, it's wonderful. Marie is doing a monthly directors, um, I won't call it a meet and greet, but I know it's a sort of um, making coffee yourself with coffee, the coffee with the director. Um, and I think that's a wonderful thing. Um, I think that right now we have a lot of unhappy people who have a lot that they want to say. And um, I think we've got some repair that we need to do and, and we need to rebuild this trust that's so important. I'm wondering, I know it's difficult because I know, Marie, you are so, so busy, but I'm just wondering if for the foreseeable future, if we might want to think about extending that to a weekly meeting, a weekly mm -hmm. coffee time, mm -hmm. um, and that maybe some of our, some of our board members mm -hmm. could all you know, take turns to, to be there as well, or when you can't be there, that we could step in, or maybe a staff person <coughs> might do it, but um, to just have it like a, a weekly time that people could get, know that they could come and chat, and it might not be quite as big, it would be more personal, because it would happen more often, and then I think the conversation would be perhaps even you know a, a, a richer conversation then. So it's just an idea, I know that we're not deciding anything tonight, but it's just a suggestion to think about. Also, I have one other thing we were on, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, is there any other, I'm just curious, is there any other non-elected board that you have um, or council that you have that has their emails available to the public? Um, I think that, uh, I think that possibly planning board might um, and possibly uh, the tree commission might. Um, I mean, I just want to say the biggest challenge with email is that um, public bodies are required to meet in public. They're not allowed to deliberate outside of public. And so the advent of email has really created issues because it's really easy when you, if an email gets sent to like every city councilor um, and then somebody hits reply all, then you risk that you are actually having an online deliberation and, and the people, there are complaints that are filed all the time over the Attorney General's office. Um, you know, you're allowed to send an email out to the group to say we want to schedule a meeting next Thursday or the meeting's been canceled. Um, but if somebody sends something and says, I think the senior center should do this, and then somebody replies to, to a quorum of the body, then you're, then it, so email is fraud. And I know that our city solicitor is often telling boards when he goes to meet with them, you have to be really, really careful with email just so that you don't unintentionally violate the open meeting law. Um, so I think that, and just whatever you decide with email, you just have to be really cautious. And this isn't any, this is something we tell all of our city boards. Yeah, I just very quickly. So do you mean um, that any of the emails that we, we have in conjunction to our meeting, this morning will send out emails to us and those communication are considered to be public or transparent and the public can have access to it? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Uh, well, er, any, right. anything is a public okay. record. I'm right. talking about right. even that, using our that if, the, um, yeah. okay. that if yes. the director sends you mm -hmm. an agenda, right. that's just transmitting right. um, administrative, mm -hmm. ministerial is the term that they use. Okay. Um, so. But if a member says, hey, Kathy, what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. And, then, right. and right. then you start having an email chain, mm -hmm. then it's as if you're, you might as well be at the right. Bonnet Diner having yeah. a secret. No, I, I, I work in the state, um, but yeah. I, it's because, it, and it's said so, using a personal Okay, email. got it. So exactly. my opinion on this, again, is that we shouldn't be giving our personal emails out or our personal phone calls out because we could jeopardize the public meeting lot. So that Michael, if somebody wants to talk to Michael, you can talk to Michael, you know, that kind of thing. Putting it into an email is also, you know, jeopardy of it going 
by all of them too, you know, everybody getting. So that's my personal request, is that we use the emails that the city provides and that people don't respond to emails that directly that are getting, bring them to us, bring them to this meeting. You can say thank you, but bring the email here if they're coming to you. Okay, I'd like to move on because this is, we have lots of things to get through. Okay, so are we gonna talk about the uh, communication and the happy place? Someone wants to bring up some ideas on that. The perception of one of the, a couple of the people it was that the, the senior center is no longer a happy place, and that communication is better. And so I know that we've put a lot of things in place at this point, Marie, you want to talk about some of that? Or, well, give Marie feedback as to what? We have brought the candy back, um, and we'll continue to have candy in the coffee shop. Um, so I'm hoping that um, people will Give us some input on candy you would like that we're not that we are not supplying. Um, we are looking for more suppliers, and um, so right now we're sort of limited to what we have access to. Um, and I, I think communication and, and this notes idea about atmosphere um, came through on several of the, the feedback comments we heard um, a couple of weeks ago. So I'm wondering. I know in just the two of us had probably a Kathy, so we didn't buy it in the ocean, but we, we had a suggestion we felt was um, had a couple of interested folks who might form a small advisory group to provide some input. What you know, if folks are feeling this is not a welcoming or happy place, what would make it that way? Mm -hmm. Let's get some some perhaps some feedback from folks who are participants um, who had a different perspective on those of us who are not here as often. Well. Mm -hmm. And so we'll put in the suggestions. Mm -hmm. Michael? I heard uh, an interesting suggestion from a couple of people. You can speak up. Informally, speak up. Speak. Uh, which is, it would feel more welcoming if a couple of volunteers were from behind the, the, the counter and came out and greeted folks mm -hmm. and had, you know, a kind of warm and welcoming. Now, I, I don't know the logistics of what would be required, but it seemed an interesting suggestion. Uh, I think I understand that if somebody came out and uh, wanted to show me around and talk to me, that, and I understand the need for the people to be doing work behind the, the desk, but if there were additional volunteers, a couple say, uh, who could come out and meet people and talk to them, show them around, uh, would that be something that could be done and would it make people feel more welcome? Yes, Bob. You know, when um, I went through all the different person's comments, you know, it really came down to many of the complaints are intangibles, unfriendly, unwarm, cloud over the center, unwelcoming, negative atmosphere, unhappy, joyless, depressing. So if you run through all of that, it is all how people you think not actually something that's tangible. They're all intangibles. Uh, you know, I'm in, uh, talking about uh, what was here with basically myself, uh, trying to find out what are all the policies and procedures. There was a, a couple of comments knowing what are all the rules, whether they're implied, inferred, does anybody understand? Uh, you know, is there something to do with opening windows, opening closing doors, adjusting thermostats, arranging furniture, how loud people talk, uh, groups of individuals, use of cell phones, unattended minors, there's all these little items that are part of what happens uh, that, are, that is visible to people, but they don't understand why. Are there rules or policies about all those different things? It's difficult for people to understand that they're doing something wrong by opening a window or moving furniture if they don't know that up front, okay? And normally that type of interaction ends up with some type of argument or uh, altercation, not altercation, but a disagreement over why you can't do it or things along those lines. Uh, also, uh, the lobby being closed to beverages. 
you know, based on photos that I've seen at other senior centers and uh, meeting halls, and uh, they do allow coffee drinks mm -hmm. in lobbies, and people can sit and have a coffee in a chair other than in the either the uh, the uh, coffee shop or something else. I believe uh, that used to be the policy uh, a few years ago that they had an open lobby and people sat, had a coffee, and talked. Now, if there's an issue with the uh, volume that people talk, I don't have a problem with volume because I'm always loud and I've always been that way. So, so when Bob, I'm in, you seem to be going down the whole list. We're trying to yes. focus on one thing at a time. But so if you could offer your suggestions. First one is, is really about a happy place, okay? okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to address the things that could change mm -hmm. since the okay. same comment was listed probably five times or six times mm -hmm. it, it might reduce the number of times we have to go over the same comment if we just address the, the whole thing about it being an unhappy place or a you know uh, but as far as changing some small things mm -hmm. a, a greeter would be one I believe at one point there was a position at the at the senior center for a greeter yeah, before my time. Before your yeah, time. There was. Where, you know, that, and, and I think it, it didn't last for very long, but yeah, there was yeah. a volunteer who was doing it. You know, and uh, that type of uh, thing where that same person could get feedback about issues or things that would be and provide without bothering people that are trying to work at the desk or other things. Uh, and answer those small questions if they were if they knew what all the different things that went on were like. I'm open. Go on next. Kathy, I just had a question for Bob and and for myself. Is that okay to have a conversation? Because my it's my impression that both of us spend a lot of time at the coffee shop, and it seems like it's a pretty friend, friendly place. <laughs> at least we live there, so I don't know. You know, it's, it does seem to be. You know, welcoming to people. You know, we've had people all, and people feel they come in. And granted, uh, it may be just the good food, but I like to think you know we have a kind of good attitude there in the coffee shop. So I don't know if that can be replicated throughout. And then, granted, it's a small microcosm of a bigger place. You know, just right. saying hello, smiling, mm -hmm. and ask how they're doing goes a lot to letting people feel that they're welcome in a place. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know we do get opposites things like. I went to the coffee with the director and someone got up and just said how horrible the food was in the bistro. Someone else got up and said, I love it. So, you know, <laughs> we are dealing with people's perceptions of what a happy place is. Change sometimes is not a happy place for people. Yes. So, you know, suggestions in the, the area that is great to make it, you know, go to the coffee shop. It's a happy place maybe <laughs> too. But, so Donna, go ahead. I think Marie should hang out at the coffee yeah. shop. Yeah, no agenda. Yes. Just regularly, and she should bring little pecan pies along. <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate for sons. Thank you for coming. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, to, to, to support that, I, a little louder. Yeah, I've been I've been trying to think about. Um, you know, I, I, I came from, when I worked, I worked in a school, and so I, I think that um, there's a real parallel between um, being the principal of a school and being the director of the senior center, in that you're sort of, you're the administrator, but it's really important to be, um, to have, to be out on the front line, yeah. um, and, and be able to, to, you know, to be able to greet people by their names, and, and also to, just to, um, model the kind of behavior you expect from your staff you know um, and so I and so not only for you but because I know I mean you guys are so busy I know how busy you are but I wondered whether it would be possible even if it was split between you and Nancy and Jay or you know that that maybe for 20 minutes a day that I mean I I feel like we it, because your schedules are so busy it, that um, interaction with the public has been undervalued, um, and and that maybe to let I know there's it's hard, but to maybe to let something else go so that for 20 minutes a day, one of you gets scheduled in to just 
spend time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, Deborah. Yeah. I, I had also thought of that, Jean, so I, I want to ditto what you're saying. Uh, Tom Peters, years ago, uh, called it management by walking around, mm -hmm. uh, or, or wandering around, but it was really, it was meeting with staff. It was uh, So here would be staff, volunteers, participants, if a board member happens to be there, whatever, and it's interacting with each of those parties uh, to get a pulse at the time. So it's it it seems it's a easy enough thing to do, and I'm I'm advocating not only for 20 minutes a day by by one person because it's just that 20 minute segment would only be a snapshot mm -hmm. and so maybe to split it throughout the day and there's different people here at different times and and you get a different flavors that way mm -hmm. thank you yeah okay anybody else Let, let's go on to someone else some other um, ideas I think we'd like to talk about the um, the fees for the the different classes and the um, and I think that there's already some Work being done on that, Marie. Maybe you can speak about that. Um, yes. Yeah, so I announced yesterday in some fitness classes that um, we have uh, decided to start a pilot as of January first. Um, I guess it will be January second, where uh, we'll do for three months. We'll try this punch card model where patrons who want to attend Y classes can pay whatever they want for, they'll pay $3, but they can use the money they put down on a punch card to attend any of the Y classes. So there's the flexibility of going to the time that works for you, um, the class that you feel like doing that day, as opposed to having to sign up for one class that you do all month and maybe can't attend all the classes for. So. Um, and I'm hoping that that will be something that's fiscally sustainable, that um, it will attract more people because it has so much flexibility and that it will help to really build up um, our, you know, our program so that we can add, we can add more variety of classes as well. So um, we'll see how it goes over the three months and we'll get feedback from you about that after the three months and see how that's going. Um, and so we will be writing up some materials about that so that it's um, clear um, and spread the word. Is that something that's worked well in other centers? Other centers do that? Yeah, so I've been doing a lot of research and talking to other centers. Um, and also the Y in Wilbraham, Julie Bianco, the director of the Y, she did this um, at the Wilbraham Senior Center. They had a punch card system. And so, um, you know, whoever we end up contracting for, for our fitness programming, um, we will we will do this system if, if it goes well over these three months. So, um, but all the other classes that aren't white classes will go along as they have with their regular fees. Um, and as, as we go along, as those classes, um, you know, maybe uh, some of them have less people than we'd like, and some people, some of them are crowded. So we'll, we'll be assessing the whole, the whole package of uh, things that we're offering and trying to make it work um, potentially with different kinds of options like we're doing with the punch card. So we'll, we'll see, but we're going to start with this, this project first. Clarification: What were the two senior centers that you mentioned? So um, the Wilbraham Senior Center. Um, I talked to Nevea, the director in Holyoke. Um, they have a similar system. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also still have the wellness grant. So people who find that it's still a challenge to um, go to all the classes they want to go to, um, and I really encourage people to apply for this. Not everybody likes to to um, apply for these things because it's just really a simple process and um, it gives you fifteen dollars a month to put towards fitness option or a clinic or a farm share so um, it can make a you know a difference in what you put into your health and fitness regime every month 
And I think um, we could also speak about the fact that you have a, a book of questions now, too. And in that book, there are some pages about the fees and how how you can, if you if you're ill, how you can, you know. Yes, that there was a um, at the meeting last time a question about refunds if there's illness and. So I, I have started writing those things up. So if, if someone is ill and they um, miss, they can't use the um, money they put down on their card for fitness classes, we um, will let will let that stand for use um, or credit. Right now it's in the credit system, but um, the the punch card method will it will expire at the end of the month. So you, you need to just purchase what you're going to use. Or you lose it, but then you you can purchase however much or however little you want to, um, and just add as you go, basically. So, um, but if you have questions that you don't know the answers to, you can leave those in the suggestion box, and I will add them to the question and answer book. So I think it would be gross each other about the book, but I'm thinking it's going to be one book, and it's going to be pretty big, given what we've already seen. Um, and, and people are bound to have questions about what's in there. Yeah. Is there a plan, I'm looking at you, but probably more at Jay, to make sure that the front desk volunteers and others are fully yeah, briefed be, on what's in the books and they can answer also. questions? No. Yeah, there'll be an index, but also I'm, I am starting to draft a guidebook for the senior center so that um, when people become a new member and for people who are already members that, um, that there are things about, you know, that we, we ask people not to close, to open the windows when air conditioning's on because it throws off the air and the whole building gets, it, it's hard for the system to regulate the temperature well when other people are opening windows and things like that. But, um, so there are reasons for why we have certain rules and, um, and they're not to, meant to be punitive. It's really so that we can maintain the comfort of the temperature in the room so that the window one for instance is a good example um, so I'm hoping to have this guidebook so that there's a lot of things in there that maybe you don't you don't know the answers to that weren't part of your orientation when you came became a member any other questions about the book? okay great all right, let's go through some more of these. Um, one person spoke about um, the seniors feel they don't have a yeah. voice on making decisions here at, um, at the senior center. So does anybody have any suggestions on that er in that area? Mm -hmm. Kathy? Well, one of the things I was thinking about in certain areas is, is designating like the work groups together, for instance, around the visitor policy that some of the council members could get together and ask for invited um, uh, members of the community to join us and help to divide, develop um, guidelines and, and uh, information for people around visitors. And the other one is developing a dementia-friendly community. That's something that we definitely need community membership for that. So those are just a couple small areas. That way it releases some of the, the onus mm -hmm. and the burden on you all here, the staff, and we can we can kind of help out, but also to gain input from you as our, our um, constituents. Thank you, Kathy. Back to the other Kathy. I'll just reiterate what, what I know Cynthia said, which is um, I, I think it would be wonderful to have um, a working group of folks who are probably mm -hmm. referred to that but to hear from seniors who use the center all the time, what does welcome mean to you? How can, what are some 10, 20, 30 tangible things we can do to make it more welcoming? What does happiness in the senior center mean to you? What are 10, 20, 30 things that we can do that are tangible? Like, I, I think that they need a voice in that, and I think some working group of people who would be willing to help us with that um, would be a wonderful thing. So I would love to see more of that. Michael? It occurs to me that many of the suggestions focus on Marie and the staff, and, and they are tremendously busy people, even given the very good suggestions. I would be willing, and I suspect other council members too, to come to council, coffee with the COA members, 
you know, so I would like to think about us helping out in that way. Um, you know, two or three of us could, could have a meeting, and there are enough of us that uh, people could then come in and we could talk and we could learn and pass that on so that our advice and suggestions would be even better practice because we do more. And I'd be more than willing to, to join in an effort so that it was coffee with the, the council. True. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to try and get back to the suggestion about more frequency. Yeah. I just I just have to caution you. It's a fine idea, but you just if you're going to have a regular subgroup, even if it's not a quorum of the Council on Aging, then um, the open meeting law would look at mm -hmm. that as a subcommittee. So you I'm not talking about that, David. What I'm suggesting is replicating what Marie did. Yeah. Come in and have right. coffee. No doubt about it. But I'm just saying that if three of you were going to regularly have a coffee hour, yeah. it might be good to just post it. Okay. Um, so happy to post it public. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's all. It, it becomes subject to open meeting law. Happy to post yes. Is that if there's more than one council? It's person. more than if you form a subcommittee of a larger body. So if you just do, if it's, you know, if one or two of you are having coffee, that's okay. I just, just if you're doing it in a more formal way, then you just have to be careful with that. But that means if, if you could, as you think about it more, sure. you can always contact our office and we can have sure. a city solicitor look at it. That's coffee for the community, I think. Is yeah, that just what drop in and have coffee. Yeah. That's what, it wasn't, I don't know if it meant. It's not a working group. My, uh, no. A working group. No. But I think we're all on the same thing. Yeah. 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 yeah, and there's hmm? lots of places where, as a council, we can volunteer. Yesterday I volunteered at the holiday party. And Donna volunteered there, Jean volunteered there. That is one way to really interact, and I got a lot of happy feedback from people there, which was nice because I would like to invite the public next Thursday to think about some happy things that you might be able to tell us. You know, it's, it's hard to hear all the difficult stuff all the time. Yesterday was a great time, and I encouraged the council members to pick up on some of those volunteer opportunities because you know, it's it's informal and it's not. You know, you're, you're getting information without saying, "Tell me all the things you don't like about the senior center, or all the things you do like." You know, it's it's just a, a, a gentle give and take interaction. Yeah. So I recommend that. Bob, um, I'm still wondering about um, publishing the role of the council mm -hmm. on so we can do that at the next meeting. Okay, because that does explain that the uh, public can uh, contact us as individuals, and it, uh, it gives the uh, website to look up information. And I think it might be helpful if they had something that would be published that says clearly what some of the roles. Are. Yeah, the only reason it's not in the chronicle right now is because. We didn't finalize the language. Yeah. Otherwise, it would be. Yeah. And that would be a regular piece in the contract. Well, it was, but I but then it. we were going to make changes, but we didn't actually agree on those changes. So we need to we need to talk about <coughs> at our next meeting. We need to agree. Yes. All right, we're moving right along. Um, I think I'd like to ask people about. The, um, the the space constraints here at the senior center. Some people have complained that um, they're turned away from things due to space constraints. Um, let's see. Maybe it's just to talk about this the, the use of the space at the senior center. That, um, no, that was for the meeting. That was for the meeting. Oh, it was for yeah. the meeting. Mm -hmm. But isn't the use, I think the, the live point, the use okay. of the space has come, isn't that come up in some concerns sometime about availability? Um, bridge group has had concerns about the availability. So it might be helpful to script. Is there anything we need to offer? Or, I mean, I know, I know that you, you made a priority, correct me if I'm wrong, during the normal operating hours that priority goes to senior center sponsored activities and later in the day non senior center groups have the opportunity to use and rent, right? Oh, when we're when we're not open for our own yes. programming, yeah. the rent, the building is available for rentals, yes. Um, and so uh, the building 
when I got here, there was rentals going on during the day as well, and um, we really wanted to build the programming up and so that we could offer more variety of programming. And now we have space constraints because there's so much programming going on and so many people coming. Um, so it's, you know, it's a pretty active and bustling place and um, we have about, we've increased our membership by 30% in a year and a half. So, um, you know, there's, we have to make sure that we are providing in an equitable way for all the different needs and all the different kinds of groups that want to be here. Um, so we're not um, we're not turning groups away, but you know when a city department calls and wants to have use one of our rooms for a meeting, we don't. We sometimes have to say no because we and we have and that is our mission is to serve the seniors first and foremost. So um, um, of course I won't. You know, I won't say no when it's a big thing. We, but if we have something scheduled, we can't, um, we can't, we can't cancel things that we've planned. Um, and for other say, needs. So yeah. that was a positive that the time yeah. priority was certainly being given to, and, oh, and yeah. the ability to expand. It sounds like it's still a delicate balance mm -hmm. with space issues just in trying to meet yeah. needs. Yeah, yeah, and we're juggling. You know, we're juggling a lot of logistics and operations. Um, of managing this the space use at the building um, we've worked out some things around the custodial that's working better um, so we we need to prepare for how many more people are going to be joining the senior center and making sure that we have things uh, running smoothly so that we can do that so. okay Hi. Oh, Kathleen. So I had a question in terms of, because I know initially, because there was so much going on, that programs would be moved like a couple times. And when people came in, you know, their program may have, was going to be here, but then it was here because of, of so much going on. So you feel now that you've got um, Nancy and that's under, it's much better managed? Well, so when we started the lunch program, we had to move some groups. Um, and then we have started to sort of uh, designate certain rooms that are really suit the needs of certain mm -hmm. kinds of groups as where those kinds of groups will happen. So for instance the cabinets here are, are filled with um, fiber arts kinds of activities so there's quilting in this room and knitting um, and this room is used for a lot of sort of seminars and things like that so um, the workshop is used for music and art mm -hmm. primarily so um, you know, it, it not only um, provides more for the groups for what they need, but it also provides balance in our programming. Mm -hmm. um, and then sometimes the rooms are more akin to what the activity is, so it, it cuts down on our moving chairs and tables, um, which, which before we did a lot more of, um, because the rooms weren't always suited to the needs of that group. We also added added the sink to a room, which we never had before, so that there can be the kind of activities that are messy and need that kind of thing. And um, even though people might not have liked that the library moved over, it, that use of that space is just, it's amazing how many people are in there creating and making things. So it, it, I know that there has been a determination as to how to best use the space here, and it, does, it can't satisfy all people, but it certainly has been quite lively here with lots of different things happening. Uh, Bob? Carry on. In the, in the fourth item down, uh, from the person speaking there, talking about the uh, loss of volunteers, mm -hmm. and that, that's not what I want to, what I'm asking for is that in the flyer that goes in the Gazette, that little single one, that we put a large uh, notice about the ability for seniors to work off their property taxes by volunteering at the center. I don't think it's as well known yes. uh, activity and if they can get volunteers who actually are gaining something for volunteering, uh, it would be a, a big advantage. It's already a, 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 a steady policy for seniors to work off uh, some of their uh, tax debt by volunteering and uh, if we could add volunteers here it would help everybody yep. yes 
and I'm always looking for good volunteers to the tax program. Um, I, I have the advantage of getting the first look at all the volunteers who apply, um, but I do um, assign them all around the city. Oh, so um, that's part of my responsibility is managing the, tax, the senior for tax work. On another the responsibility. Yes. Um, yeah. And the mayor's office just put out a press release about it, and it was um, also on the news. This is what Bob's talking yeah, about. Which I've seen. People have, yeah. It just came in Tuesday's paper, I think, as a matter of fact. Yeah, every month that mm -hmm. goes out in the Gazette. Mm -hmm. Different color each month. That's a good idea. Great, Bob. Good, good idea. Um, oh, Kathy, sir. Yeah, I, I, um, Bob raised volunteers in um, one aspect, um, but I know it's it's it was in um, the comments and about um, volunteers either leaving or being unhappy and of course this is like deeply concerning i know Marie is dedicated and so grateful for the volunteers and we all love our volunteers but unless it, it feels they feel the love right like they really need to feel the love and so i just feel that they are the heartbeat of a successful senior center and i think that maybe the council can really um, address this in a, in a serious way, in some way. I, I don't have all the answers right now, but I would certainly think, I know Marie, you're doing an incredible um, planning job of, evalu of um, evaluation and, and getting feedback from every constituent, every stakeholder, but I wonder if we might do something, um, an outreach effort to our volunteers uh, um, directly. And, uh, Jay can help with this or whatever, but I'm not exactly sure what form it would take, but I, mean, I, I would imagine that the council, like we can divide the whole list. I know it's a huge list, I mean a lot of volunteers, but maybe we could like literally call each one of them up and say, we appreciate you, we love you, and if, if there's anything you want to say to us about how we can show our appreciation for you more or how we can um, involve you more in ways that feel meaningful to you, I think that would be really helpful because I just think it's really such a vital part, it's a vital element of any senior center, and it was brought up a number of times, and I know we all really appreciate them, but we need to have that be shown and felt, so. And not only once a year at the volunteer exactly. get together. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Michael? I've heard from a number of interesting suggestions. I wonder if the council would be able to receive a list of the specific suggestions in advance, if not 30 meeting, but if we could get a list. Uh, that way, I think we'd be in a better position to give good advice to the world. I know she's here and she's listening. We may want to talk about some of the suggestions, flesh them out. Bob has had some, you know, we've heard a number. I'd like to see a list of what's been suggested. Uh, Jay's writing it all down. Yeah, that's what the notes are. <laughs> but will there be a list specifically yeah. of the suggestions? Okay. Good. Yes. Good. Yes. Good. Yes. Um, I don't know if right. everyone saw my article for December. Yes. Okay. I, I, I specifically was wanting to sort of, because I know that once a year is not enough right. to acknowledge how many people make this center what it is. Um, I mean, we really do have about 150 volunteers here. And, you know, there's always turnover with volunteers. Um, and there sometimes it's not a good fit. Um, and we'll move people to other postings when um, something else will work better. So, um, you know, I think that um, We've been talking a lot about developing more volunteer opportunities here that will actually help make it a more welcoming place. Because um, having volunteers at the desk is not, they can't really handle taking on all of the administrative stuff and overseeing the rest of the, all of the center. Um, it really needs to be bigger than that. And they need to have fun, too. Like, it mm -hmm. to be fun. Enjoy. Yeah, I agree. All right, there's one other thing mm -hmm. I wanted to note on here is one person <coughs> suggested that they'd like to see more interracial and cultural programs here. Anybody have any feedback on that one? So, 
I did speak about that at the coffee hour. I think I think Stan brought that up, mm -hmm. and I um, and I talked about that we were actively working on opening the center um, for more cultural groups, and there are quite a few programs that um, are focused on language from different cultures right now, um, and the, the Irish group. Um, is doing a lot around Irish culture, and not just the language, but um, but that we are also working with Northampton neighbors to engage the Latino community in building programming here that they want, that would that would make them want to come. So that they're actually involved in planning and um, creating that programming themselves. So we will be building on that. But I would like to do um, that kind of process with any group that wanted to be part of the center. Because th this center is for every senior in this city. Um, that, that's our goal, is to, to serve everyone over 60. Um, and, the cent and it doesn't all have to happen in this building. It can mm -hmm. happen out in the community as well. That's good, because you're probably running out of space. We are. We are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, um, and efforts towards um, workshops or programming around um, thinking about um, uh, how can we be a, a senior center that um, is actively um, looking at our own biases, mm -hmm. um, cultural biases, actively looking to dismantle sort of white privilege and, yeah. and so on. I think that that's all I know part of sort of the, the bigger context of being welcoming and whatever. We, we need to look at our you know, um, of course, um, ourselves and so on. Um, to so any programming that we can do around that, any conversations and discussions that we can have around how we could um, both look at ourselves and look at our policies and how we do things, I think would be really helpful too. Yeah, and I did I did notice that other seniors, some other senior centers are ahead of us in that yeah. way. Yeah. Um, and so not only does our mission you know, sort of narrowly reflect some of those values, but but we could create a, um, a mission around inclusivity and diversity. And um, and I I am thinking about these things, and I will bring them to the board, but they're still sort of percolating in the um, larger steering committees that I'm involved with, with um, community partners, Kulu Dick and um, Healthy Hampshire. And so there is a project coming on that will be focusing on institutional racism um, and also trauma-informed delivery of services. So, um, yeah, I really, I think it's very important. Um, so we, we will be talking about those things. And we, we will be fo forming um, focus groups and uh, working groups on all of these topics, and we have been, and so, um, they're going to be listed in, they are listed in the Chronicle, and some people have come to some of them already that have been around age friendly planning um, and things like that. We have a salsa dance group. We, do. we have like 40 people coming to dance every week. Yes. Okay. All right, um, one other thing. I'm um, sorry to add to, to Kathy what she said in terms of. Also, not to forget, in, in terms of diversity, is, is issues around eco economics and class around here, especially being more close to solve in terms mm -hmm. of making our uh, programming too to be accepting for everybody. And I, I couldn't hear you, Kathy. Economic oh, and, 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 and class. 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 class, 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 and, class. Class. and not to forget religious yeah. diversity. And it's wonderful that we refer to it as a holiday party, as opposed to, it's so easy to say it, a Christmas party, for example. So it's wonderful that we're setting an example here uh, by doing that, and we, we will continue to do that. All right. Um, there's um, another topic I'd like to get to, and that's transportation. I think um, that Marie has addressed this before, but I, I think it could be said again that you know we have two vans coming, only one van working right now, as well as our medical transportation people. Um, 
It's at the top of the third page again, and it's a response to the comment that was made that transportation has been cut back. So transportation has not been cut back um, only temporarily because one of our vans um, was not operable, so it wasn't really safe to operate any longer. So we um, are holding off until we get our two new vehicles, which should be very soon. Um, you know, there's always a lot of red tape with these kinds of things because PBTA has paperwork they need to do, we have paperwork we need to do, and we're doing it as fast as we can, and we will have um, an even bigger and better transportation system um, and a new coordinator coming on. Um, and I have a lot of um, plans for developing some more kind of social-oriented uh, carpooling programs and grassroots kinds of um, transportation options also. So uh, I think people will be pleased. This is going to take a little while. And can, can I add, I know you mentioned Northampton Neighbors earlier, and I know we have a strong partnership with them. And I know at this group that Michelle has been able to refer people to them. Mm -hmm. Oh, so yeah. We're not, even in this law, I suspect there's not a lot of folks that we're aware of not being able to get transit. No, we're serving everyone who's calling us for medical rides um, and shopping, but we've had to prioritize medical rides and shopping over errands and recreational need right now just because we have one van running. Um, but no one is uh, who has a medical ride need um, is being turned away. The, uh, the medical drivers um, you know, were worried because they weren't getting um, requests, but a lot of the Riders who were getting one-on-one -on -one rides have been going on the van, and some of them didn't even know they could ride the van for medical rides. So um, we've just had to sort of streamline a little bit um, until we have the other two vehicles. So. I thought that someone might have brought it up when we were looking at the fourth one down on the first page on the first page so what's, what's the i think the, the well the topic that i'm looking at is it's they're talking about employees and volunteers either being asked to leave or quitting or it says being fired and so Someone must have brought up the issue around employees also. So I, I didn't want to do a disservice to the public or to us by kind of like ignoring the elephant in the room around employees also. Um, and the whole issue of it's employee and staff and membership of recruitment, training, and retention. And, and so I just often feel that um, Staff, even though it's a um, personnel is a personal topic, you know, I guess it, it might help for all of us to have a little more clarification um, around policies around employees. We've, we've spoken a lot about volunteers and less about um, employees. And it's interesting, sometimes we may hear after the fact, oh, so-and-so is not here anymore, you know, and so uh, a, a staff person or somebody in the community may come up to me and say, knowing that I'm a board member, say, oh, did you know so-and-so isn't here? And I'm like, oh, and I'm not, I know none of us are held personally responsible or that we're supposed to know everything in real time, you know, about personnel changes, but I'm just wondering what role, if any, we could play in um, being part of increasing uh, retention or, or you know, there, I know there's members of our advisory board who may have ex, I know uh, Dennis isn't here right now, he's a former HR director for the city of Greenfield, but I'm just wondering how we might also be able to be helpful if you're you want any help or if it's appropriate okay, let's for us to be helpful that. regarding employees. Thank you, Deborah. Okay. It took a while yeah. to get it out, but that's my question. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, so I, I am not allowed to speak about employee issues. They're completely confidential. And 
there's always um, turnover in organizations for various reasons. People find other jobs. Um, you know, it's really um, not something that I can bring to the council and talk about. Um, it's not something I can talk to patrons about. No, and, I'm not suggesting we talk. To yeah, them. but but the employees themselves are free to talk about it themselves. Um, but I, like I said at the coffee hour, I think, um, you know, you know, the, the the whole thing about telephone, like that, you know, rumors start. Sometimes people get little bits of information, and it just grows, and and stories get created right. because we naturally fill in gaps in knowledge when we don't have mm -hmm. all the answers. Um, I think it's important to um, to just trust that we are following all the policies of the city. Um, that I'm not I'm not doing things in a vacuum. That I always am consulting with my superiors, and um, that it what's private is private, and it's for it's for the employees' protection and for their privacy and. None of us would want our private matters being discussed in public, um, so we have to respect that. I don't. I hear but you. That's. I was not. I. I just. You don't have to explain yourself. Say that I was not referring to violating anyone's privacy. Well, yeah. I just don't know how else we would talk about it. Maybe another as a time. council, though. Yeah. Yeah. Just to. Uh, in a general conversation about employee uh, retention that I know we care about in every city department. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, just to reassure you, um, you know, we, um, you know, yes, there's been turnover, and I think with every new director, you know, things, right. people, some people are excited and some people aren't, or, you know, but um, people change jobs frequently because they're building a career and um, they move on for more experience, and so, but I, I just want to reassure everyone that um, my approach with my staff is very collaborative and very positive and we meet every morning in the hallway of our office suite um, for um, a short little check-in and we spend a, um, a lot of time you know just really um, uh, supporting each other and we have a staff meeting every week so I think um, my goal and my vision is to have a a unified team that's really supporting uh, each other so that we can do the best work yeah. that we can. Yeah. And I saw Jay agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, hold it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Jane. Um, I just I wanted I, I just wanted to mention that um, I I know from individual individual conversations with you, Marie, how um, strongly and passionately you feel about people. Um, of all income levels being able to have access to the senior center and to um, and to the, the programming and, and the lunches mm -hmm. and um, I'd like I'd like to encourage you that, like as we're starting the pilot that will maybe press the limits of, of what we have um, with with the punch card mm -hmm. um, and and also I know you know with the three dollar lunches that, that that's a stretch that I'd really like it if you would share with the council um, if, if you feel as if we may be facing a shortfall and I'd also like to just remind the community that the way that we meet those shortfalls sometimes is through fundraising um, and a lot of what has been happening in the news has, the thing that has concerned me is that people I think there are a lot of people who are I mean, I know that there are issues, and I think that we've tried really hard to address them here today, but there are also a lot of, like, really fabulous things happening here. Um, and as we reach out to the public and hope that they might make donations in order to enable us to provide subsidies to people as they do programming and subsidies to people who have lunches through the um, fundraising arm, um, which, you know, um, of Elder Vision, which is basically the friends of the senior center, um, it's good to have a good message that goes out to the public as well. And anyone who's here who feels strongly that, that we should be providing subsidies that might be beyond what we have right now, could volunteer to work with Elder Vision in order to do fundraising. Thank you, Jean. 
I'm, I'm on that committee and there is a need for people to uh, contribute their time and you would be welcome. Um, I just want to say something quickly about the, um, the vision I have for uh, equity here is um, I think there have been a lot of fee-based programming here and I we're trying to make sure that we have a variety of um, uh, pricing and free groups and I want to increase that but I also am hoping that the model that we're doing with the fitness center will be able to be extend to pro programming as well so that if we're able to raise money um, uh, financially that people could be screened once a year and then have sort of a sliding scale that they are rated at that would apply to everything and so but we're not you know we're not um, as big as sort of the Y has this model the 10 to 60 percent sliding scale and we have to raise a lot of money to do that so right now we are limiting that to the wellness grant which is primarily focused on health um, and so it is a model that we're, we're working towards. But really, in order for a senior center to serve all the people that need to benefit from it, it needs to provide that equity um, and inclusivity. And I'd like it to not be something that people feel stigmatized about, but that they can access easily and not feel that, they, um, that they're sort of like having a snap a snap card can feel that way to people that people can people know that they're low income and, and that really shouldn't be a barrier I think that everyone should be able to go to any group here um, does anybody have any other <coughs> pressing issues we missed on here A lot, of, a lot of comments, there were a lot of recurring things that Mr. Bryan said. <coughs> oh yeah, let's talk about the copy machine. Ray, you want to talk about that? The copy machine. Well, I, so I know that people, that that, that was a past practice that um, a lot of people felt was really important. Um, but it's, it's actually um, not something we should be doing with city resources. So we are, um, I mean, the reason that I really was feeling that it wasn't a good use of our um, reception time was that it was pulling our reception volunteers away from our customer service at the front desk so people would be at the coffee all the time and there wouldn't be anyone at the front desk. And, um, but I also feel like it's, it's really not appropriate use of city machinery and so um, um, for I guess Forbes library has a point operated yes. copier um, so and the mayor's office was looking into how they're how that's they're managing that there so we are you know we'll see that's been a happens. feature there for a long time yeah. Yeah. and paradise, right. paradise copies gives free copies if you go in there and just want one two copies they do not take your money, and that's just down the street. That's another place. And they have for free. What? And there's a parking lot. And there's a parking lot. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think, of course, you know, it's convenient to come here and be able to do all the things that you need to do, but we also have to think about our uh, the capacity of our time and the capacity of our budget and the use of our space. And so sometimes we just have to find a balance that works um, and it may it may be that we can do a point operated machine and it would be great if um, if we lease it from a company and they do the maintenance because I can imagine that that might then take up a bunch of staff time trying to deal with a copier because we have problems with our own copier so um, but also you know I think it's friendly business to, to let paradise serving the community too so um, it's not that we don't want to serve the seniors with these conveniences it's that we have to we have to look at how many more people we're going to be serving and and the prior things that we have to kind of put our resources towards um, so we also I want to mention we do have a printer in a computer room um, so that didn't go away and people can 
get on the computer and print things out from there. Paradise would be interested in coin operated <laughs> copy of yeah. mm -hmm. it. <laughs> <Right. laughs> um, I think there was something else. Anybody else have anything on their list of things? Hmm. Okay, so if I would like to entertain a motion to adjourn, if anybody would like. Oh, the next meeting is December 12th, next Thursday. I'm going to make a motion. Second. Okay, so Bob made it. Cindy seconded it. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Passes. Thank you very much, everyone.